a quick review on what strings are. We said strings are um, essentially um, character arrays following a standard to be able to hold um, anything that is of the nature of a text. So somebody's name, uh, street address, um, sometimes numbers that they act like texts. Things that you don't want to do calculations on it, but they want to deal with it as a text, like mm, zip code maybe, if you don't want to deal with it. Or in our cases, postal code is a mixture of alphabet and, and, and text, you want to keep it. Anything that you want to deal with it as a text, you keep it in a character array, and you follow the standard of, <clears throat> you follow the standard of adding um, one null to the end of this character array, hence marking where the end of data is. So a character array and a string are identical. They are two, two exactly same things following the standard of putting a null at the end, differentiates between the two, how they are different. Okay? So if I told you character AR41, and character str41. Which one is string? Which one is array? I have no idea. Which one is character string? Which one is an array of characters? I have no idea. I have to see how I'm dealing with it, and then that's going to uh, actually set it up to be um, um, a string or a character array. So what is the difference between the two? Again, not null terminating uh, uh, zero at the end of data in a character array makes it a string. So because this standard is so important for us and it solves lots of our problems, they actually created a header file specifically following this rule of null termination in a character array for texts, and they call it string.h. Because a character, uh, uh, a string is not a single entity, a variable that we can deal with, therefore the basic operations that we are using for variables, they don't work for these. For example, first let's, um, yeah. For example, if I have over here a uh, character name 1, and I'll put over here 41. When I say 41, it means the maximum size that I can hold this thing as a string would be 40. So if I have Fred in here, and I have character name 2, 41, And I put over here Fred2. Writing such a thing is wrong and it will not work. I cannot say if name1 is equal to name2. And then in here, say printf the names are the same. This is wrong. What I'm doing is wrong. So, and if I can, I'm going to say else over here, printf the names are not the same. And we're going to actually run this and check it out and see what's going on and how can we deal with this thing. I just want to emphasize on this because this is the major confusion that comes with people who start programming with C language because we like to have our variables hold single values. In our brain, Fred is a single value. It's someone's name. Adam, it's someone's name. George, it's someone's name. We feel like it. It's one entity. I want to put it in one thing. C language is not capable of that. Adam for C language is A, D, A, M, and an all at the end. It's five values. 
That's why you cannot use an operator who works with single values in them. If I put that assignment over there, this is what happens. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to go back to what we had about uh, arrays. So essentially, we mentioned that uh, when we actually create an array, this happens. So I'm going to have the, the memory that inside that memory, I'm going to have two arrays. This is one array. And these are, these are two arrays now, OK? And then I'm going to have two pointers pointing to the beginning of these two arrays, one and two, OK? The first one that I have over here is, essentially, the first one that I have over here is name one, and the second one is name two. And when I actually look at these things, this is what happens. Name one points to the beginning of this address, and name two points to the beginning of this one. Now, the values inside these two things, the values inside these two, va two uh, uh, arrays are actually Fred and Fred. So name one and name two seem to be equal to us. But when we are running this program, what's going to happen? When we are running this program, actually execute this program, so if I run this program, one more time, there we go. So when I run this program, this is what happens. It comes in here. So the first one happens, which actually name one and uh, it points to Fred. So name one has Fred in it. And name two will have Fred in it too. But take a look. Hexadecimal value for name one. What is that? It ends with A0C. The other one ha ends with 98. Two completely different addresses in memory, right? So when it comes to this if statement, it compares the first address to the same second address. Are the addresses the same? No. Therefore, it's going to say the names are not the same. It's going to jump to that one. So always remember, when you are dealing with strings, you are not dealing with one entity. You are dealing with a bunch of stuff together. And if you want to compare two names, you actually have to write a function that compares the first character, second character, third, fourth, and if they are all match, it returns true. OK? If they are not a match, it returns false, right? So do we understand what's going on now? Why we cannot use regular operators on strings? We cannot, because they are not single entities. All right? Good. So let me clear the drawing. Do you still recording? I am recording, yes, thank you. <laughs> OK, so clear all. All right. So now let's see how we can compare these two things. So this was wrong. This didn't work. So I need to design a function that can compare two names for me. OK? Since I'm designing a function that compares two names for me, it's better to um, write it in, in a way that it can do more than that. Because if I do comparison, I have to write three, three functions. One is equal, if the two names are the same. One, if the first name is less than the other one, it means it comes first in dictionary. Or the second one is less than the first one, which means the second one comes first in dictionary. OK? If that's the case, so instead of writing three functions, I'll play a trick. I'll write one function. And I'm going to say, I'm going to return three values. I'm going to return the unique vector, because equality is unique, right? It's, the, it's just one thing. So I'm going to say, I'm going to return zero, not for true or false, zero if the two are identical. I'm going to return negative value if the first one is less than greater than one, and I'm going to return a positive value is the second one is. So let's do that. Let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to create integer, and I'm going to call it strcmp. Okay? 
I'm going to pass the addresses of two names, two strings to it. So I'm going to say constant character pointer str1 and const character pointer str2. Okay? So constant character str1 or str2, if you don't like it in a pointer version, you can make it a, an array version. Potatoes, potatoes. I'm going to leave one like that, leave one, the other one like that. They are the exact same thing. There are no difference. There are no difference between the two. If you understand what an array is, you know that an array without a body, what remains of it? A pointer. So that is a pointer. Right? So if I write a pointer or an array, same thing, no difference. Right? So now what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to start from the beginning, integer i. Um, set to zero. Now I'm going to say while str i is the same as str sorry str one i is the same as str two i. So what happens over here? This loop keeps happening if the two characters are identical, correct? Correct? But I have to check one more thing. Not only if they are equal or not, but also I have to make sure that I'm not at the end of the, the string, right? Because if the string is null, I have to stop. Correct? So, str1 not equal, if str1 is not equal to 0, so just to make sure we understand what type of 0, I'm going to cast the character to 0. Or you can write like this if you like it, whichever you like. Okay? Null, I mean. That's what I mean, okay? If it's not equal to that. Now, do I need to check SDR2? Not really, because if one of them is zero and they are both equal, then it's going to stop anyway. If one of them is zero and the other one is not, they're not equal, so it's going to stop, right? So if it is not equal to zero and they are both exactly the same, add one to i, correct? So it's going to keep going while they are the same. As soon as a difference happens, it comes out. Is that correct? Right? So let's say, let's walk through. So let's say one is Fred and the other one is... No, I don't want to go Jason. I want to have... <laughs> the other one is Fred. Okay? <laughs> Fred and Fred. Okay? So what's going to happen? The two Fs are the same. It's not null. It's going to come... Uh, Fra. Oh, Frank. That's better. Okay. Right? So, but I'm walking through. What's going to happen? F, F the same. I will be added by one. Correct? Goes up. The next one. F, R and R the same. It's going to come to the next one. Correct? Now, E and A, are they the same? No. So, it's going to stop and come out. So, essentially, after the while loop, Right? Whatever i is, the two characters were either both zero, right? Were either both zero or different. Is that correct? Now, at the very first class when I came in, we talked about ASCII code. And I told you characters are nothing but integers. Remember that day? OK. Now, which one comes first in dictionary? Right? Which ASCII code is smaller, A or E? Think about what I just said. Why some people are quiet? Everybody should have said A, because A comes first. You know, they started. Is that correct? So if I return exactly SDR1, not that one, SDR1i minus SDR2i. 
to i, what's going to happen in this case? I want to see if you are doing it right. See? So, so the, the result will be negative or positive? Positive because A is negative? Negative. Oh, sorry, wrong way. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. So let's write it like this. So look at my function. I want to design my function so I can remember which one is bigger than what. So instead of this name one, name two, I want to do like this. If str, um, str compare of str1, and str2 less than 0. If I write something like this, OK? Oh, name 1, name 2. What is here? Name 1, name 1, and name 2. OK? I want to write this. I want when I write like this, when this goes true, it's as if I have this. It's as if I have this to remember. You know what I mean? So, so essentially, if you want to know how, is it, how it's supposed to be true, if name 1 is less than name 2, it should be less than 0. So does that work now? Name 1 is Fred. It's bigger than name 2. Is that correct? Is it returning a negative value now? Walk through it. So essentially, I'm saying string compare Fred and Frank. So when it reaches over there, it's going to be E minus A. It's a positive value, correct? Which means if I bring it, it's going to make sense, right? If it's greater than 0, it means name 1 is greater than name 2. So it's working, correct? And if I, so, so I can actually do like this, do it like this. If it's equal to 0, the names are the same, right? Else, if if it's less than, then I'm going to say Percent S comes before percent S in dictionary. Okay, so if name, name 2 is less than name 1, then I can put over here name 1, name 2. Okay. And in here, I'm going to say else. I don't need to check it again because, of course, if it's not equal and it's not less than, then it definitely it's greater than, right? So in here, I'm going to say name two, name one. I'm going to say for sure. Does this make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Name two. Now, <clears throat> if they were both Fred, what would have happened? It would go to the end, and they both will get to zero, right? Zero minus zero is zero. It means they're equal, right? So let's, let's do it like this and see what happens. So now I'm going to run this. Let's actually walk through it and see what happens. F10. All right, so it comes over, it comes over here. I have these. Now, name one, Fred, will be SDR1. So it's going to go right in there. This will be Fred, and this will be Frank. It comes in. It is not equal 0, and they are equal. So it will be added by 1. It is not equal 0. If you look at this, they are both R, so it will be added by 1. Now it comes over here. 
it is not equal to zero, so this is so this is true. But because SDR i is e and SDR two i is come on show it is a, it is not equal, right? So it comes out. And when it comes out, it returns SDR one i minus s that value is what? Four, because A, B, C, D, E, right? So one is four more than the other one. It returns the value four, correct? Because it's returning the value four, it's a positive value. It is not equal to zero. It is not less than zero. So it says Frank comes before Fred in dictionary. Got it? Now, what? so this works, definitely. I don't need to test the other one. If I want to see Fred works or not, I'm going to run it again. Let me just stop it. Come on. Seriously? Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to run it again. This time, this time I'm running it with uh, a both being Fred. Both being Fred. Control F5. Both. And it says Fred comes before Fred in dictionary. What the devil happened? Uh, we did something wrong. Let me check. If it is equal to zero, return zero. How is it returning anything wrong? Okay, oh, let's see if I... Now, this is strange. Let's see, what, what have I done wrong? <laughs> okay, so... Um, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah. What did I do? One is asterisk and the other one like that? They're identical. No difference. No, I'm just going to, I'm going to see, this is how I'm testing it. I'm going to come right over here, put a stop sign, and then go run. So it comes and runs it right before that. So this value is dash, dash. And dash. Let me see, something's going, oh, 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 oh. Can somebody tell me what kind of a stupid mistake I made? Oh, I made such a stupid mistake and I love it. Okay, tell me. Pardon me? I didn't do what, 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 what? Come on, debug it for heaven's sake. Hurry up. Huh? My objective in this while statement is to check two things. If the elements are the same or the element is zero, I am at the end of the string. What mistake did I do? Am I checking for the elements to be the same? I am, right? Am I checking for the element to be zero? I'm saying str not equal zero. str is a pointer pointing to the beginning of the array. It will never be zero. I should have said str i. I have to check the element. Bad boy, I am. I have to. I have to check. I have to check to see if I'm getting to the end of the string. I didn't do that. I said if the address is null, address can never be null. Fred is in it. There's some value. It's pointing somewhere, right? Now it's gonna work. Good. That's why I love writing code in front of students, because you make stupid mistakes. So when you make the stupid mistake, you'll remember this, hopefully. All right? So that goes like this. Now if I do like this, now it's going to say the names are the same. Now the thing that we need to check to, say, to make sure everything's OK, it, it's this. Freddy. OK, so if they are the same, but one of them is becoming so which one comes in dictionary first, actually? Which one comes first? Ta-da! Right? Because one, one is zero, the other one is an ASCII code. So one is zero, the other one is a value. So still the minus thingy works. See? Very simple. Very easy. Are we OK with this? Yes. One? 
I, it's not book. I'm, I wrote it myself. Oh, yourself. Okay. okay. So you're not going by yeah. like, their screen compare. You're doing your own. But that's why I wanted to make the point now. I do not, although it's a very simple function, but because it's commonly used, it's already implemented in, in the library. And the fact that you're saying it's returning minus 1, don't be so sure about it. The correct thing is negative and positive. OK? Don't be so sure about it. There's exactly minus 1. It's very easy to make this actually minus 1 and positive 1. Think about it, how, how you can do this. It's just with a simple um, arithmetic thing, you can actually make this thing to be 1 or minus 1 or 0. But I don't want to do that. This is good enough for me. OK? The point I wanted to make, look, the like how many lines of code is that? Nothing, right? It's literally two lines of code when you think about it. It's a while and a return. It's one line of code. It's just while statement. One while statement, and that's it. There's nothing else. Correct? So although this function is very simple to write, but because it is used so much, they actually put all these things in string header file, which means I don't need to do this one anymore. So uh, so in here, I'm going to call it 01 far dot string compare dot C. Okay. And instead of doing that, I can simply say take this thing off and add string dot <laughs> include string dot H. And just put everything lowercase because I wanted, to, wanted it to be different. So it's str compare and str compare. Everything's lowercase. And all right. And it works exactly the same way. No difference. Identical. It's just you know, now you know what the code is for it, right? How, how it's written. And we have so many more functions that we're going to go through right now. One by one, we're going to see how it works and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this? So I just wanted to tell you what strings are, why do we need to uh, know them, and why humans think that a string is a single value where it's really not. Uh, a string is a series of values back to back. It looks like a single entity. That's why we cannot use regular uh, uh, operators for checking equality. For those who came late, look at the video at the first 10, 15 minutes that you lost. Can we see the string dot Yes, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you can see string dot, of course you can. You can see string dot H, but uh, um, you cannot see the code. It's the header file. It will just see the prototype of the yeah, function. Yeah, that's like it'll, have, it'll have more than the prototype you created, right? No. It, it just... It, oh, it just do you ever write any code in a header file? No. Okay, it's all in a binary file. Okay? Now, let me show you something that you need to know. Um, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to deviate from what I wanted to teach. Uh, forget about it. No. The, the source code is not there. If you want source code, I think there's a way that you can actually install the source code. So when you walk through it, it actually goes through the code. Yeah, and 99% and of the time, the code is written with a mixture of C and assembly language because they want it to be fast. So when you look at it, you're going to go, what? Because it's going to say MOV from this address to that. So anyways, go check it out. OK? So we're OK down to here? Now, let's look at all the good functions that we need about strings and go through them and, and see what they're good for, OK? So string compare is string compare. We know that now, right? All right, so we're going to change these two things instead of name one and name two. And I'm going to say uh, printf enter two names comma, separated, oh, come on, separated, OK? Uh, so, and let's go to new line and do like that. And in here, I'm going to write scanf uh, percent um, 
uh, 40 characters max, so I'm going to go 40 or uh, I'm, just, I'm gonna, just going to do it like this. I don't want to make it foolproof. So I'm going to say up to comma. Now there's one more thing that I want to teach you right now. Okay, you see I'm putting comma in here. When you do like this, it's definitely comma, right? So that's what it's going to skip. So if I want the next one to be backslash n, it has to be percent uh, not backslash n, right? So the first one is comma, the second one is a backslash n, correct? So that's, that's, how, I, that's how I get it. So in here I'm going to say name one and name two, right? This is what we do, correct? Um, there is a way to eat a character, tell to scanf, read the character and spit it out. Don't use it. I mean, throw it away. How you do that? It's with this. This is the only percent sign that doesn't need a variable to be assigned to. So in scanf, when you put an asterisk, percent asterisk C, it means read a value, variable, read a single character, eat a simple character, and throw it away. Don't put it anywhere. Are we okay with that? All right? Yes? You're talking about uh, the asterisk? Yeah. That was in a printf, completely different story, okay. showing what that's a completely different okay. story. Just keep that in mind. I'm, gonna not, I'm not going to use it now because it doesn't make sense. Because I'm saying go read up to comma. So definitely it is comma. <laughs> okay? So I'm not going to eat a character over there like this. But you could, if you need to just eat up a character, you put percent asterisk C. It, it, you don't need to put it anywhere. Okay? So if I, if I wanted to do this myself, I could have done this. I could have, say, character junk and say over here percent C. And between the two, I will put address of junk. <laughs> right? This is the equivalent of what you have done over there. Read one character, put it in junk, and don't do anything with it. <laughs> okay? So instead of doing something like that, you can uh, simply use uh, percent star C. I'm not going to use it now because it doesn't make sense. So now this is for testing and seeing how, how things are working. So, so name one, name two, enter two names, comma, separated. So now I can over here say far that. Solimanlu and Far oh, and Far Dude Sole. Okay? And when I do that, Far that Solimanlu comes before Far Dude Sole in dictionary. Okay, so you can actually see which one is coming. Okay? Alright. So that's that. So zero two. Zero two. Uh SDR compare dot C. Now, many times when you're actually dealing with some programming stuff, you write integer uh, n1 and integer n2, okay? And you say n1 is set to n2, right? So in here, if I have n1 as, uh, n2 as, uh, 234, n1 becomes 234, correct? Now, in name 2 over here, I'm going to put Fred. Okay? In name 2, I'm going to put Fred. Common mistake. You guys will do this. Name 1 is set to name 2. What's going to happen if you do this? It's going to be a compiler. In this case, because name one is a, cons is a constant character pointer, you try to change the address. This will not work. Again, the, those are arrays of characters. You cannot use regular operators that you use for single variables. They are a bunch of stuff. Because of that, a function is written in string header file called str copy. You want me to write the source of str copy too? Anyone? No? Okay. Huh? Yeah, it's very quick. Sure. 
So, but mine is not like uh, the one that you have in a thing. So, vo <laughs> you'll see void str. Um, I'm going to write it cryptic for you, actually. Str copy, so you can kind of scratch and say, "What the heck just happened?" Right? We'll do that. So I'm going to say constant character pointer destination and constant character pointer source. And I'm going to say while destination plus plus is equal to source plus plus. Voila. That's the source. That's, a, that's the um, uh, thing for it. Why is it giving me error? Seriously? W is undefined? Do you see a W anywhere? Anyways, so in here I'm going to say it wrong. Wrong. Can't work. Work because name one and name two are not primitive types, OK? So what do I need to do? I need to say str copy, str copy. Uh, OK, um, this confused the heck out of everyone. Let me just explain what it is, then I'm going to do it in kindergarten version. OK, so what happens over here is very simple. Yeah. We know that uh, asterisk is more powerful than plus plus, right? OK, so what happens? First, it's going to get the target of source, one character, because I'm saying where target is pointing to, right? Where, where at. So target of source goes to target. So the first character of source goes to first character of uh, destination. So one character is copied. Then it checks to see if the outcome of this result is zero, OK? Then it adds one to the pointers only, because plus plus only affects the source, not the, the, the target of source. So now the pointers will point to the next variable. Then it's going to put the next variable and go to next, go to next, go to next until they're finished. Walk through that, OK? I'll remove it and put the kindergarten version. So now I'm going to say over here integer i. For i set to 0 and destination i, i plus plus, I'm going to say, oh, uh, sorry, source i. Now I'm going to say source uh, destination i will be set to source i, OK? And then when I'm done, destination i will be set to no. OK? So this is what happens. This is what, why is, why is it? Oh, I put a const over here. Stupid I am. That is a const. This is not a const. <laughs> the source is a const. Destination, I'm supposed to write over it. Why didn't you make it a constant? Bad boy I am. OK, just muscle memory. I just type it. OK. So yeah, destination cannot be. That's, cannot be uh, uh, so that was the error that it was giving me. But anyways, uh, now um, for fun of it, I can actually do this. Const character pointer return destination. <laughs> Why? Because I want the, the, my function to actually return the destinations thingy too. OK? Now that's identical to what you see. So, what happens is, is this. You can actually do this. You can say, um, you can say printf percent %s, uh, str copy into name1, name2. And go backslash n. So I'm going to do two. So I'm going to say str copy returned, str copy returned, OK? And in here, I'm going to say printf name1 is 
percent s new line and that's name one okay so what happens over here is this uh, the command sdr copy gets name two and using this puts everything everything from source into destination and null terminates the destination one by one i'll show it to you we're going to go through it so just to see what happens i'm going to do like this over here I'm going to write over here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. That's enough. Okay. So when we overwrite, we can actually see it's being overwritten. Okay. Now that I wrote that thing, let's actually walk through it and see what happens. So um, I'll go F10, walk through it. Oh, I, what did I do? I put the wrong one. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now it comes over here. I have name one and name two as the values that you see. That we don't care. We're going to go to string copy. So it's going to go to SDR copy. Destination becomes ABCDFG. Blah, blah, blah. Source becomes Fred. Um, I0, source is not null because it's not null. It comes in, puts the source one into destination. So yeah, let's actually do this. I'm going to add this to watch and take a look at it which means I can actually look at the value as it's being developed. So you see it's ABCD over here. So it puts the first element in there. As you see, it becomes F. You see that? Goes up, becomes R, E, D. And now source I is null. Oh, it's D. It's, oh, it didn't, oh yeah, it's null. So now it's null. Because it's null, it becomes false, comes over here. Now it puts, it overwrites E over here. If you look at this I over here, you'll see it's E, right? It means it's here. So it overwrites that with the null terminating thing. And as soon as I do that, pa, it shorts it to Fred. The values after E are still in memory. They didn't go anywhere. But because we mentioned that the end of the string is here, it doesn't bother showing the rest. Are we okay with this? And as soon as it happens, it returns this. What is this? Name one, the address of whatever it was, right? And now it's Fred in it, correct? So it's going to go back over there. And SDR copy returned Fred, which is actually the destination that it's copied to. And then it's going to print name one is Fred. Okay? Now, this function is written to for you, and it's called SDR copy. So and it's in, uh, it's in the library. So again, I'm going to save this as uh, 03 fardads sdr copy.c. And then we can remove this completely and simply use sdr copy with lowercase. And that's exactly the same as the other one. No difference. Are we OK with this? So if I run this, it's going to be exactly this. Oh, 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 I changed the wrong one. Copy. OK, so copy. Let's bring this one up. Paste. Remove, save. OK, sorry, I, I put the wrong one. So. The wrong name so I'll save it that's it make sure it compiles yeah it's exactly the same no difference okay that's that now that's SDR copy so we know a string compare we know SDR copy how to compare something and something else yes The, this is this is a for loop. You're, this, you're talking about. Yeah. You're talking about. It you know, this you're talking about this one. Yeah. In C language, any value other than zero is considered as true. So writing not equal zero is a waste of time. Writing if this thing is not equal to zero, of course it's not equal to zero. It's true. Why write it then? So you don't have to put it's that. yeah because it's it's, it's a. Don't forget, C programmers, by nature, don't like long stuff. That's why it's so cryptic. 
if you look at Kobo language, you'll see it's like you're writing a letter to your grandma. Please add, fifth, I don't know, 51 to the age. Actually, you literally write that and, and put a dot behind it and the computer compiles it. Okay? C language is not like that. It's, it's short form. Because of that, you have to understand all the aspects of it, uh, which means uh, for true and false in C language, anything but zero is considered true. So you never need to check for something not equal to zero because it essentially means... It's, if it's zero, which is null, it's false. Okay. Yeah. So, so now that you mentioned it, let's actually comment over here. Not equal to zero. See, I'm going to say... So in here, essentially, it says, yeah, essentially, this is redundant. You don't need this part. OK? All right, so save. Now, if after all you have done, I don't want to write the code for SDRLEN anymore. SDRLEN is exact same for loop. It just returns the index. OK? And that's the length of the thing. So it simply goes through it. By the way, look at the window outside. This is a spring in Canada. I wish I could have showed the recording and people see what's happening out there. It's snowstorm, 4th of April. <laughs> yes, you have a question? No. no? OK. Anyway, so, so that's that. So SDR, and I've, now I can say printf and, uh, and percent %s is percent %d characters long okay and i'll go to new line in here i'm going to say name one and in here i'm going to say strlen name one are we okay so string length is essentially a loop searches for that little null thingy as soon as it finds the null it sees how many times it counted it returns that one okay so if you have a program that is supposed to change the, like you have to check the length of something 50 times, don't call SDRLEN 50 times if it's the same thing and the value doesn't change because it's a waste of time. Each of them is a loop. Best is to actually have a character, get the length, and then compare with that length thingy. Okay? Don't call SDRLEN three times on the same thing. It's time consuming. Now that you know there is a loop involved in there, okay? It's the best is to always get the, if the value of name one is not changing, is to get the value and know what it is and then continue after that. So now if I run this program, um, it's going to say, there you go. And Fred is four characters long. Are we okay with this? What are the, I want to I first do the things that, functions that they want to talk about, and then I'm going to jump into the things that they didn't mention, and I'd like you to know. Uh, so we are at uh, uh, string library, so SDR cat. SDR cat concatenates two, uh, two strings, which means it adds one string to the end of the other one. Okay? What does that mean? Think like a computer programmer. When you say str cat concatenates one string to the end of another string, it means another string must be a string before that. You cannot just create an array and concatenate something to it. You must first make it an empty string. How do you make an empty string? Actually, that was a good question that I should have asked in the quiz, and I did not. What is an empty string? New? 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 OK, what is the definition of a string? Can somebody tell me? This is an interview. Tomorrow you're going to come. I'm actually hiring for Big Blue Button tomorrow. I'm, I'm asking you right now. 
Okay? What is it? What is what is the definition of a string in C language? At the end of what? Okay. Having that information, tell me what is an empty string. Thank you. It's an array that the first character is null. It's not just a pointer. A pointer points to God knows what. So if you want to concatenate a string to another string, that array cannot be just a character array. First, you have to make it an empty string, a string that doesn't have anything, which means first you have to say name 0 is set to null. After you make that null, then you can concatenate something to it. Why? Because strcat essentially searches for the null in the first string, remembers what the index was, and does a string copy to the end of the other one. Okay? That's what it does. Simple as that. Okay? So it first does an str len, finds out where is the end of the other string, then it does a string copy to the end of that one. Poof! And it's done. Okay? That's why if you want concatenation to happen, so this is 0, 4, str copy, and strlen.c. So if you want to, con like, if, like the, qu the thing that I gave you in the quiz, I told you we have this, so let's do the quiz. In the quiz, I told you, let me actually um, uh, bring the code from the other one. Uh, da, 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 da. It, it, this was the one. Which one I asked for two strings comma separated? Anyone remember? Which one was it? It was probably string compare. Yeah, so too lazy to type. <laughs> OK. So I'm going to call this name. Middle name, mid name, character last. Okay? Actually, let's say a name cannot be more than 20, a middle name cannot be more than 20, and a last name 40. Okay? Now, a beautiful question for a test. Concatenating these three strings, what is the size of the full string that I. So if I write over here, Character, full name. What should I write in here as size? Eighty-one. Remove all the ones, add them up, then add a one. Okay. So if it's twenty-one, twenty-one, forty-one, you have to say okay, two, four, eight. That's eighty. Now one, four, null termination. Okay. Now, one mistake. Aha, two extra spaces we have. So we have to put spaces between, OK? If I wanted to say just concatenating, 81 is right. But if I, you want it to be space separated, then it has to be 83. If I, put, if I have put 83 right now, you would have thought that that's, the, that's how it's supposed to be. That's why I brought this up. So the two extras that I'm putting is for the spaces between the two, OK? So that's going to be 83. 83, I'm going to say 83 because 20 plus 20 plus 40 plus no plus two spaces. Okay? Just know what, why we have uh, the thing. Okay? So in here, I'm going to say three. Uh, please enter names, comma, separated. OK, comma separated. So in here, I'm going to say first, last, uh, middle, and last. OK, and all right. So in here, I'm going to put name. Name, mid, and last. OK, now if I want to actually do this concatenation thingy over here, OK, there are two choices. Number one, if I 
somebody tell me you're not allowed to use anything that SDR cat, then you have to make sure that full name's first element is zero. F first, you have to do this. Now you can have three SDR cats. So now you can say SDR cat into full name for uh, the name. Now SDR cat again into full name, the middle name. And SDR cat into full name, the last name. Of course, obviously, I would need to have SDR cat to full name uh, space to make sure they are space separated, right? Are we okay with this? Now, if I want to, so I'm going to say printf your your full name it name is percent s new line and I'm going to go with full name. All right. Now, if I run this program, everything's going to work perfectly because, oh, I should have, uh, anyway, so this is how it's going to happen. So it's going to say Homer J. <laughs> Simpson. So it's got to be Homer J. Simpson. Okay. Now, 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 instead of this, I could have done something else. What I could do was this. I could actually copy the first one. Instead of, you know, when you copy a string to a character array, because it's a copy, it makes the destination a string, right? So the first one could have been a copy and the rest an SDR cat. But you cannot start with an SDR cat unless you have the target being a string already. Am I making sense? Or completely out of hoo-hoo? Are we okay with this? I don't need to walk through this, do I? Anybody wants me to walk through this? Don't be shy. No? All right. So, SDR cat, uh, 0, 05, S, 0, 05, SDR cat. Now, now, one of the most important things that I think you need to know about strings, and then don't talk about it here because it's involved with pointers, is this. Uh, so I'm going to say name, 41, um, 61. OK? Now, take a look at this. If I want to look into a string to see if there is another string over there, how, what can I do? I'm searching for a string inside another string. I want to see if there is a dad inside for dad. How can I do that? There is a function for that. OK? So you can actually use, so you can actually say, um, and it returns a character pointer. What is the character pointer? It's the address of the appearance of the substring inside the array, or it's null if there is nothing in there. Okay? So I can say character. Um, uh, let's uh, let's uh, use the thing. So uh, printf, uh, enter your name. So I'm going to say scanf uh, percent uh, new line. That's that's fine. It's going to go over there. I'm going to uh, read uh, name. So I'm reading the name, and then I'm going to say printf um, um, yes. Question? Nope. Uh, Enter your name and the string to search for, comma separated. 
Now, in here it doesn't make sense because you can see it yourself and search for it, right? But let's say the products that I gave you for the price and you wanted to search for a price of something. You never know what is the full name of something, right? But if you're looking for 7-Up, you write 7-Up and you're hoping that 7-Up 12-Pack is there so it's going to pick up 7-Up out of all the things. So when you are searching, it's very useful. So, so now I'm going to have a, a name read, so name, and I'm going to have uh, a string to search for red and just test it and see how it works, okay? So name and substring, I'm going to say. Now in here, I'm going to say if. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to create a character pointer. Character pointer where? Oh, uh, that's a keyword. I can't use it. Uh, um, location. OK. Now I'm going to say location is set to str, str. That's the name of the function, str, str. And str, str. Why well, it doesn't help me? I forgot this. the first one is. Uh, so hopefully the first one is the one that we are searching, and the second one is the substring that we are looking for. Now if lock, which means if it's not null, if it's pointing to something, okay, I'm going to say over here printf uh, here is where your substring starts. Okay? And I'll put the percent %s, new line, and in here I'm going to say, what do I say? I'm going to say uh, lock. And in else I'm going to say not found. All right, now let's walk through this and see how is, how is it happening, okay? Uh, uh, okay, so let's do it like this. Um, um, let's uh, walk through step by step. I'm going to run it. So it's going to come over here. Uh, oh, shoot. You see what happened? I, ch I modified the wrong file again. Let me copy this. Copy. Go over here. Paste and paste. Okay, so this is the one. Save, run it again one more time. All right, take two. So this is what's happening. So I'll start. Enter your name. And then in here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the name. So for, for name, in here, I'm going to say far da douche ka. OK? And in here, I'm going to look for dad. OK? Now, if I hit enter, what's going to happen? Oh, sorry. My bad. Uh, Control-C. <laughs> I made a mistake. Sorry. Stop. A comma separated. This it was supposed to be. Yeah. My bad. Sorry. 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 Uh, where was it? Mm. Okay. Let's continue one more time. So again, it was uh, far da douche ka and comma d a d hit enter. That's better. Okay. So this one is far da douche ka and this one is. Dad, okay? Now, when it checks it, what it returns will be, take a look. Look at the location. It starts from Dadushka. You see that? So essentially, lock is pointing to halfway through the name. So it's actually, it's actually pointing right where dad begins. You see that? Okay? So when you, when you actually do printing, it's going to go like this. You see? Here's where you start. 
dadushka. Okay? So it actually points to that point. And, and it does, of course, it's not going to say that, but if I, if I put something completely crazy, control of five, um, uh, so if I say over here, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, whatever, and comma, mm, X, Y, Z, then it's going to say not found because it's, it doesn't find anything, it returns null. Okay? That's a very important thing in string header file to, to know and um, it can be used for uh, many different purposes. So I actually added that data.txt to show it to you, to go through it one by one and, and look for the, the names and uh, do a search, like search for a thing and see what is the price and show the price of it if we wanted to, okay? So we can do that type of a thing, a very quick, yes, program. The variable location, L-O-C, in your example, what type is that? Is that an array? I have a question. What is the difference? You just say redundant array pointer. It's a pointer. You can look at it as an array or look at a location of something that begins. So if you wanted to actually extract exactly that out of it, you have to go three characters. Because it's halfway through, it shows the rest that it goes to the null. Because I'm using percent %s in here, it starts from the location in the array and keeps printing it until it hits the null, right? That's why it's, I said that. That's why, it, on purpose, I added extra stuff after that. OK, don't forget the concept that strings are like this. They are arrays. You start from the beginning. You print, 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 print until you head to the no, that's the standard of the string. Uh, are we okay with this? Questions? <laughs> no questions? All right. So let's pause over here, go for a break, and come back. And uh, uh, meanwhile, I'm going to give you your quizzes back. Uh, please, please, please. What I'm doing over here, I want to do that STR, STR thingy to actually search through a a file and find the price of a product. So that's what I want to do, OK? But I'm going to do it in a nice way, which means I'm not going to create the parallel arrays as I did before. You did this in your workshop. You actually went through it one by one and printed the table. Remember formatting and all the stuff? Now I'm going to actually create a product that has, that has SKU, price, and name in it, which are the three records that I have in my file. You have the file already. And then I'm going to create a, uh, a function called read product. So read product essentially receives a file pointer, which is a, f a, a so I'm going to call it, instead of file pointer, I'm going to call it input file. OK? So it receives the input files pointer and receives the address of product in which it wants to write the information into. Then it does the scanf. You have done the scanf already, so I'm not going to even change it. So it's essentially that. So it's f, sc f scan f from the data file, that is input file, read this and that and so on and so forth, but it's going to put it in the address of C. This is a perfect example. Take a look. You see that? When you are dealing with a structure, everything remains the same just the path for this structure comes in between. So I have to have address of SKU because it's an integer. I have to say P to the SKU. Remains the same. In here, I don't need an ampersand because name was a string, right? So all I need to do is to say P to the name. And in here, I have an address of a price. So I'm going to say P uh, goes to the price. Are we OK with this? Right? Now I want this read product to tell me if it was successful or not. How is it successful, this one? When it returns? Did you do the workshop? How is it successful? When it returns three, right? So if it's return three, I want to return true, right? So I'm going to say return. What did I do? OK. So now I'm going to say return f scan f being equal to 3. So if it is equal to 3, it's going to return 1. If it's not, it's going to return 0. So read product of mine will read the product one by one. Now here, I am going to do buffering. Now you know what buffering is. 
what did I do? I created an array of 100 products. Instead of going through the file back and forth and doing all the stuff that I'm doing file, it's, remember, when you are going into file, you are doing physical activity which means you have a hard drive with a magnetic head standing on a thing and going back and forth and you're reading and writing. So it's very expensive with respect to time. Of course, don't tell me, I have a solid state hard drive. Yeah, no, don't, don't tell me that. Still hard drives are slower than your memory, okay? So to make this fast, I am dumping everything that I have from the file into my buffer. That is that PRD100. And I'm hoping that I don't have more than 100 products. If you're not sure, let's make it a little bigger. 1,000 products, OK? Let's say I have 1,000 products, and that's it, OK? And don't even tell me if you have 1,000, you have to make it 1,001. I'll kill you, OK? This is not a string. It's an array of structures, OK? That's why I have int num over there. I'm going to keep track of how many things I'm reading, all right? So what I'm going to do in here, I'm opening this for input. And if it's, everything is OK, in here, I'm going to say, what I'm going to say, I'm going to say, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to say while, oh, is it open? Yes, it's open. While read product into address of PRDI. And I is the thing that I have in the next line. I'm going to bring it back. OK? So there you go. So, and I'm going to put a semicolon over here and a plus plus over here. Am I good? Oh, from which file? From data file. OK? You see that? What is that thing doing? It says, while read product is OK, keep going, right? So as soon as it can't read, it's going to stop, right? And I is going to have something in it that you're going to see it's a little mistake over there, OK? When you put I++ over there, things go wrong sometimes, OK? OK, no matter if the condition is right or wrong, I will be added by 1, correct? So when it gets, let's say, to always check to see if while it's returning a correct thing, this is how you walk through. Assume there is only one record in a file. What's going to happen? I becomes 0, comes over there, reads the product, right? It's successful. I will be added by 1. Loop goes again. It tries to read the second one. Now I is 1, correct? It fails. But because I++ is there already, it's going to make it 2. So whatever you have over there will be 1 more than 1 you actually have. Even if you have nothing in your file and it fails the first time, I++ will make it 1. So it's wrong. You have to make reduce I by 1. Or you can play a trick. What is the trick? Yeah, I can simply say I started from minus 1. Nobody forced us to, to start from 1. And I'm going to do plus plus I instead. Voila, fixed. So when it goes in first, it adds 1, then makes it 1. Right? Now test it. If it fails, nothing's going to add. It just comes out. One is one. There is one problem with this. You don't know if you have one or you have none. Correct? Because it's going to happen anyway, even if it fails, right? All right? So as you see, although writing stuff like this looks smart, but it's better not to do it. OK? Especially when conditions and conditions and, you know, things like that happens. Remember what I told you that, that when you're walking to a wall, if you have three steps to the wall, you don't know unless you actually take four steps? Okay, it's the exact same thing. So, although it looks very cool if I do that, but I would actually do this. Okay, that solves everything which means i is 0, it comes in. If it fails, nothing is added, it remains 0. So i actually holds how many things I read, correct? And I can put that. Do I have any other thing for that i? Any other futuristic thingy? Uh, so maybe I should, have, I should use that num thingy over there. Yeah, I'm going to use num. Uh, yeah, num, num. 
and num. Okay? Now the next thing I want to do, I want to ask the user enter a product information, enter a substring, enter a partial name of a product, and then look for it to see if it's there and print it, show it. Okay? So in here I'm going to say printf, enter partial name of a product to search for. And I'm going to say scanf percent backslash n. And in here I'm going to put a name. Character name. How long is the name? 50 characters. Did I put 50? How many did I put? 40. So let me, let's make that 40. 40. And 40. Okay. So, uh, and I'm going to read the name. But that's a substring sub name. It's not a name. Okay. So partial name that I'm doing. Now I want to do a search. How do I search? I'm going to say if, I'm going to say i is set to search in the product, it's prd, right? Search in the prd products for the name and tell me if you found it or not. I don't have that function. I just invented it. Let's do it. Okay? So I want to have a search function writ written so to just to make it more so search product. Okay? So I'm going to take that up. So it's what is it supposed to return? It returns the index of that product inside the inside the array. Okay? So So let me just copy the whole thing, just to remember what I wrote. Now I'm going to come over here. So in here I'm going to say int. It's going to return an integer. It's going to search into the struct product pointer prd, right, in the, in the array. Again, you can put an array or pointer, whichever you like. It doesn't make any difference. Am I supposed to change anything in here? No? So make sure it's a constant. Okay, and I'm looking for a constant character pointer name in there, right? What's missing in here? I have to go through the products how many times? How many products do I have? I ain't got no idea, so I put a wrong thing for that function. Remember, in C language, arrays size is always a mystery. You have to always past the size. So I'm going to add that one over here too. Now I can say for i set to 0, i less than size, i plus plus. All right. And I'm going to say, what do I say? I'm going to say um, int found is minus 1. I want to return an index. An index minus 1 is impossibility. So I'm going to return a minus 1 if I can't find it. Anything else I return, it means good job, right? So now I'm going to say uh, uh, if str str inside prd i's, um, oh p's, sorry. PRD, yeah. PRD, oh, product is capital P. Yeah, so PRD's name and the name. Do I need to know where it is? I don't care. As long as it sends me something good, it means I'm, I'm just okay, right? So I'm going to say for found being equal to minus 1, it means I couldn't find anything. While I couldn't find anything, and i is less than size, now make found what? i. Return found. 
or index, just to be more descriptive. So what I'm doing in here, I'm saying go through the array up to that size, one by one, check the name inside the SDR, SDR. See if the name that I'm looking for is in there. If it's there, save the found index, whatever index that you found, and return it. If that for loop gets to the end, reaches to the size, and nothing is sent, found remains minus one, correct? Now I can go back and do use my search. Now in here I can say, int found index or index, I'm going to say index is set to that one if index is not equal to minus one. Actually, let me teach you something too right over here. See? So this one prints in a file, right? I don't want to print in a file. Let me just remove that file. I don't want to do output file now. I want to print on, a, on, the, on the monitor, right? Monitor is your standard output. So I can, oh, I can write over here STD out. <laughs> so when you write STD out, it means print on the file standard output. What is your standard output? Monitor. So that is exactly the same thing as printf. Identical, no difference, okay? So just to show you the difference, so, so what I mean, I can do the second one as printf, first one as standard. That's going to confuse the heck out of everyone, doesn't it? Okay, let's take it off. Just know that if I put standard output, it means, and if you put f scan of std in, that means your keyboard, all right? And if you go std trn, it prints on your printer. All right, so that's that one. So first print that one, and then print the, so for that, I have to have a print product too. So uh, void prn print product const structure product. Why am I passing a pointer and not a value? Because I'm not changing anything, right? Why do I pass a pointer? Because we always mention passing a structure as a value is very expensive. Always only pass its address. Okay? So printf that one, and I'm going to simply say I want products SKU to get printed, products name to get printed, and products price to get printed. All right? So it looks fine. The only thing that is ugly over here is this. X, it's going to come over here. Void, peer print, title. Void. All right, now it looks better. Now, if index is not equal to minus one, print title. and then print product. Which product? The one at index, right? So I'm going to say PRD index. Oh. <laughs> index, but I'm going to pass its address to it. So it prints the index, otherwise not found. And new line and I have one minute to spare, okay? And that becomes the function we have written. And we close the file afterwards, and we return zero, because it's, a, it's main. Now, like this, I can actually search through this list of stuff and see what I have. You see I have honey and honeydew? The problem is that I can never find honeydew. If I do honey, the first honey it found, it's not going to show the next one. If you want to actually exercise and see how it's done properly, write, modify this code 
So it lists all the stuff that are a match. Okay? I'm doing the first one. As an exercise at home, maybe the next day you're coming in, that's going to be your lab. I don't know. So search into it and see if you can find, list all of them. Okay? All the ones that have honey in it. You can use my functions or change the functions any way you want. All your choice. Okay? I'm not going to run it because I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm just going to test it. If it works, I, I'll, I'll push it. Otherwise, I'm going to go debug it and then put it on. Any questions? Be on time. All those of you who did not wrote your name on the attendance sheet will get a one absent for today. Remember that. Be on time. Pardon me? No, you didn't know because you weren't on time. If you were on time, you would have seen it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, there were build errors. I have to fix this, so there's something wrong over you. Anyway, so I'll go through it and I'll make sure everything's okay. Okay, so uh, there's lots of errors, so I'm going to fix it, and then I'm going to post it. 